Uh, we have here with us Ms. Dr. Surinder Kapoor, uh, Chairman Sona Koyo Group. He started his business around 1988 when his first year's turnover was 7 crore rupees and now his uh, turnover is around 4500 crore. He is here to share with us his entire journey, what was the growth like. So, your story. Nice story. Well, you know, I started uh, Sona Steering as a joint venture company with Maruti. And I think uh, Maruti has been a tremendous uh, leader in growing the auto component industry. Today they have uh, 15 joint, 16 joint ventures. I was the first joint venture that we set up with them. I was incidentally the only one from the auto component industry because I had earlier uh, been leading Bharat Gears in Bombay. And I knew the automotive industry. But for, funnily enough, the rest of the people who joined had no experience of auto component, but they were good businessmen. They've done exceedingly well. I think all of us have done well. But more importantly, the country has done well. And I think if you see today the explosion in the automotive industry, it is primarily because of the auto component industry which has been well established. I don't think today, uh, anywhere I go in the world, anybody questions the capabilities of auto component manufacturers How of India. How easy it was to get a uh, joint venture with Maruti because then uh, the Indian auto industry was just starting out. Yeah, I think Maruti needed suppliers. Maruti wanted to se uh, select suppliers and grow suppliers. So there, uh, why was I attracted? Because I felt at least I'm getting a customer who's willing to commit 100% of buying from me. What did I have to do in return? It was not just giving them shareholding but also become very transparent in our, in our operations, in our cost structures, etc. Because they had uh, committed to a certain return on equity, which is fine. As long as you're getting a return in, in the initial years, I think you can develop yourself. So we concentrated on creating quality systems. We concentrated on creating or in developing our uh, employees and developing technology in terms of learning how to design and adapt to Indian conditions developing our own supply base, because we, we as steering makers... You uh, just in the first time you went on having a joint venture with Koyo, a Japanese company, how tough it was? Very you? difficult. So how did you uh, crash this? Well, place? actually I went and visited the president of Koyo at least five, six times. And every time, first time of course he refused to meet me. And fortunately I went with a Japanese trading company, Mitsubishi Corporation, and they kept taking me there. And every time it was, okay, we'll meet next time, next time, next time. And I realized that the Japanese uh, president, the company president of Koyo, the fact that he was meeting me was a good sign. I think he wanted to develop confidence in me. Now, as an entrepreneur, how do you develop confidence? You continuously discuss your, what your vision is and how you're committed. And I think the fact that he saw me as an engineer who was interested, and I had taken some of my key people who were also engineers to discuss and show them what we were capable of doing. Because he said, I cannot send any people to India. All I can do is give you drawings. We said, that's good enough. We can do everything on our own. So we came back and we copied a lot of the testing equipment they had, they had in their plant, though they did not give us any drawings for testing equipment. But I think once you have a passion to do something, you can do it. So the people uh, who, who were actually, in, my, in a sense, founders with me, my initial team of four or five people, I think we, we worked diligently to try to create that, uh, that company that we, that was a company of our dreams, a high technology company. And I think uh, the journey has been, uh, has been wonderful. What were the main challenges that you have faced uh, when you started up the company? And what would be your message for those new players yeah. trying to get into this business? Well, I think it's a very exciting business. Manufacturing is a very exciting business. My, the challenge is always has been that as a leader, you cannot seem to be slackened. Okay? If you slacken, everything slackens, especially for the initial stages, initial years, when as an entrepreneur, you're your sales manager, you're your production manager, you're your accountant, you have to know everything. Yeah? Once the company acquires a certain size and has a certain... Uh, management structure, then of course you, you can do things. But I, I say to every young person, you must do what you like doing. And you should not, it should not seem like uh, that it's an effort for you to wake up to go to, to go to your company. 
So therefore, I, I always ask people when they come to me about what businesses they should do or wanting to do, I ask them, what are you comfortable with? If you are comfortable, you'll be happy. If you are not comfortable, you can never be happy in that What are the three, you know, decisions that you have made in uh, last 20 years as a leader of an automotive uh, company that you think you would have taken otherwise that you would have been in a better position? Or there are three decisions that you are happy about? Well, those are… <laughs> yeah, I think um, one I'm very clear about is that uh, the m &A space looks very exciting from the outside. It's a very difficult stage. I, I think there's enough research that shows that 80 percent of the mergers and acquisitions don't fulfill the goals that originally people thought they would. And therefore, when I've examined now, after I acquired this huge company in, in, in Germany, and frankly, the reason why I believe it has turned around is because of my personal efforts as an owner to be upfront with the people to make sure that they are motivated to work. Because the one thing that happens when business is not good, everybody gets demotivated. Yeah. Whether you're a manager, you're a worker on the shop floor or you're a salesperson. And that's the time when you need the most motivation. Because yeah. things are tough. Yeah. And I, I have learned in these last five years that the greatest reward I've gotten is that people trusted me because I was there in, in the front line with them. I wasn't sitting in, in India, I wasn't sitting in my office, I was there on the shop floor in all my three plants, meeting people, I don't speak German, they don't speak English, but just shaking hands and saying, we got to do it. I think that kept the momentum and whatever discussions I've had with the unions or the works council, I've been very transparent. Look, this is the situation. We need to help each other. You need to help me, you need to improve productivity, you need to cut some of your costs so that the company can survive. I will make the investments from the savings you will give me. And because investments are also very necessary in companies. So my one learning very clearly is that as you grow, as you grow your businesses, the growth through mergers and acquisitions, one has to be very careful. Okay? When I look at a company like Apple, you know, they do hundreds of small acquisitions. They don't do any big ticket acquisitions. I think Tata's were very fortunate in Jaguar Land Rover and some others have been. I'm not saying fortunate in any lucky way, I think they did a good deal. But some of us did not do a good deal. Yeah? And uh, my learning has been that it's very, uh, it's very uh, important that one has a strategy for m and like that Apollo, uh, Apple has, yeah? not like uh, what some of us have done. Uh, secondly, I think I have found that to motivate employees, you need to give them a vision, you need to give them a focus. And that focus from an owner's perspective should never be that I want to improve my profitability, though that is the objective of every organization. I think in communication that has to be put into some other terms to an ordinary person. What do I care how much the company is making if I'm a shop floor worker? I need to look at what am I getting? And I think the one thing that every, nobody can challenge anybody about is quality. The quality of your products. What is, why, why quality of your products? In our case, for instance, in steering, safety is a very important aspect of our product. So that safety you will bring to the consumer. Quality gives you pride as a company. I and mean, I think I can very confidently say, if you go around in my, in my plants in Gurgaon especially, where we started, each and every employee will tell you, that I'm very proud to be a Sona employee because we are recognized to be quality manufacturers. Okay? I think that's a very important uh, lesson that I've learned. And finally, and probably most importantly, and should be stated first, is that every organization needs to be focused with, to the customer. Okay? Now, in our case, our customer is not only the OEMs, the, the likes of Maruti, etc., or Toyota or Ford, whatever, but they're also the consumers who are actually driving cars, you know. So go to a dealer, go to a workshop, find out what the problems are. And I think there you learn a lot about what you need to do uh, for your own company. It also creates pride in the people who go out there and find out, hey, yeah, we don't have any problems with your product. Or you do, then you learn how to uh, change things. And therefore, I think uh, 
in the initial stages of a company, the owner, promoter needs to be really hands-on, needs to make sure that he understands each and every nook and corner of the business. I think as he grows, he must focus more on the customer's requirements than his own requirements and motivate the people. In it. And when you really grow and you want to, you believe that you want to grow quicker, M&A is a quick way of growth. But I think it also has its risks, which when you're in the middle of it, you don't look at. Because there the excitement of growth is so, so important. So my lesson is that I think that needs to be, it's an important aspect, but also needs to be muted or, and, and focused in, a, in the right way. And I think Apple model is the best model that I've studied so far. A uh, decision that you released, that, that was the right decision you took? I think my decision uh, to have a joint venture with the with OEM is was a very unique business model. I, I think it was an excellent model. I have also, by the way, tried to create uh, small joint ventures with our suppliers okay, to encourage them because I think that's a good business model. Tier 2 suppliers. Tier 2 suppliers. I think the good thing that I, I believe I did is that whilst we have consistently been given dividends, I don't think we've had a very strict policy of giving around one-third of our profits back to the shareholders.